Hello, welcome to Cycling Tips. I am Dave and I'm back in Girona, home of many professionals, home of the sunshine, home to, well, a playground that seems to be every time I come here, full of kids playing, they never seem to be at school. Anyway, I'm here for another product launch. This time, it specializes new Diverge, a bike that's there to help you explore. There's a full new range, not just a few top ones. In fact, there's bikes ranging from 10,000 US dollars all the way down to a thousand dollars. And there's even a flat bar specific one. I'm pretty sure they call that a mountain bike, don't they? Let's delve in to a first look at the new Diverge range. So what is new with the third generation Diverge? Well, plenty actually, they've given it a solid shake up. There's a new geometry, an updated FutureShock 2.0 headset that we first saw on the Roubaix of 2020. Room for up to 47 millimeter tires and a longer wheelbase. That external swap box that used to sit at the base of the main triangle has now been incorporated into the down tube. A feature we first saw on the Epic Mountain Bike range. In fact, the Epic Mountain Bike range has had a lot of influence over the geometry of this bike with a slacker head tube angle by 0.5 degrees. The top tubes are now noticeably longer with reach figures increasing anywhere from 10 to 19 millimeters dependent on frame size. They've matched this with shorter stems so you've still got that nippy controlled handling. Specialiser have balanced this all out with a long 55mm fork offset across all the sizes. That bottom bracket has gone from being press fit to a threaded BB. It has also been raised by 5mm to a still lower than most 80mm. Those chain stays are now a universal 425mm across the six sizes. An increase of anywhere between 4 to 6mm dependent on size. All in all, the wheelbase length increases from 22 millimeters for a 49 centimeter frame up to a whopping 40 millimeters extra in the 61 centimeter frame. There is an offering of free carbon layups dependent on your budget. There is also free alloy offerings made from specialized own E5 alloy. Okay, roll out here. They've stuck me on the top tier model, the S Works. I need all the um, assistance of the lightweight, the fancy kit. We've got them all here, racer guys, endurance guys, um, super cool kids. We're all gonna mix it up, see how these things perform out on the, the road and the rough stuff. Nearly on time, nearly done. Two days of good riding. So it's back to the hotel, put the feet up and have a mull over about what I really think about the new Diverge. <laughs> Gets a bit of that for sure. Okay, round up time. And please do remember that this is nothing but a first ride review. It's not an in-depth review at all. It's my first impressions. I have only done two rides of three and a half hours each uh, in the lovely area around Girona. And I tell you what, it is very lovely. Get yourself here if you want a good bit of gravel riding. What I can't tell you here though is how it differs from the previous diverge, as unfortunately I never threw a leg over one of them. But I have thoroughly enjoyed my time on the bike. I'm pleased to see that they've upped the tyre clearance to 47 millimetres. I possess very few skills off-road on the bike and the tyres inspired confidence. I was very surprised at the stuff I managed to get down on this bike and get up actually. Yep, sure they're a little bit slower out on the road, but there's always a bit of a payoff. The 37s on the other hand are very good out on the road. I found them to roll really, really well. 
but it's not all about tyre clearance with gravel bikes it's got to handle well as well that short stem longer top tube and longer wheelbase make it for a very stable bike it does corner differently with the two tyre choices obviously but all round it's predictable and sits very well on a multitude of surfaces comfort wise well the first day when I had that dropper post in, I wasn't keen whatsoever on the rear end. It felt very, very harsh. But with that new carbon post that they've developed with the bike, it changed the characteristics completely. Admittedly, I did have bigger tyres on at a lower pressure, but you could still feel that flex fore and aft. Fingers crossed I get one of these things to test for a longer period where I can chop and change with the tyres to see if that is still true. With the relatively short chain stays for a gravel bike, that back wheel feels like it's tucked well and truly underneath you. It gives a real sort of um, racy feel to it, shall we say. That 80 millimetre bottom bracket drop isn't exactly high for a gravel bike, but I never had any problems with sort of clipping a pedal out on the roads we used. I won't go into the stiffness and the aerodynamic sort of qualities of it because well it performs smashing down that road and I won't even bother going into the aerodynamics. Do you really need it on the gravel bike? Gearing wise I was using the SRAM Red Axis ETAP Eagle mishmash. A first for me if I'm honest and I wasn't so keen to start with. That first day I only used probably half of the cassette due to the terrain we were out on and I wasn't 100% sold. The second day once we hit steeper rougher stuff more challenging stuff it came into its own and I must admit I was sold. The only if there is if you are looking at a gravel bike to do, I don't know, long distance road and gravel events over multiple days, a 2 by may be a better option for you. As for that Future Shock 2.0, well it is the second time I've used it previously on the Roubaix bike where I can see why it's on there but at the same time I can see why you wouldn't want it as well. On a gravel bike, yeah, it's definitely... Um, a boon for many people for some people though it may be an unnecessary item especially if you are thinking of doing huge multi-day events like transcontinental or something like that where you may have that niggling worry that it's an extra bit of tech to go wrong on to them bars the first day again i wasn't sold i found them far too sort of flary shall we say but the second day once we got on the rougher stuff yet they came into their own just like the group set. Sure, I did ride the top end model at $10,000 or something crazy like that, but there is a bike in the range for pretty much every price point, even one for, well, people who want flat bars that looks very much like um, an early 2000 mountain bike, but we won't go into that here. All around though, I think Specialized have definitely produced a bike that's gonna to appeal to a lot of people. Okay, that's it from me. If this video hasn't gone into enough detail for you, please jump over to the article. It is linked below. Also, let us know what you think of the bike in the comments below. Give us a subscribe if you haven't already. Give the channel a like, ding that bell or whatever so you get notifications. And until next time, thank you for watching and enjoy your riding.